emotions. You know, a lot of people argue that behavior analysis, this course, is anti-emotional. We don't deal with emotions. In fact, it's quite the opposite. We've actually studied emotions very thoroughly and we're well aware of how um, they interact with overt behavior and covert behavior. And um, interestingly enough, this is one of those areas that really bridges emotions are one of those areas that really bridge the gap between the biology, you know, the, the physiological stuff and the overt behavioral stuff. Right? So there is a respondent component in, in emotion and, and that's the emotion itself, right? The physiological properties that, uh, the, that feeling in the pit of your stomach, the increased heart rate, uh, the sweaty palms, you know, those types of things, right? Uh, those are the result of a particular stimulus, right? So something happens and those things change. When we then, uh, when we then experience those, we describe them and we'll talk about describing emotions here in a minute. Um, but the idea is, is that those physiological responses, in fact, pretty much all of them, you know, I'm trying to think of one that isn't, but uh, the research that I'm aware of literally says that anything that's controlled from the autonomic nervous system can be classically conditioned, in other words, respondent, uh, conditioned uh, respondently. Uh, so because of that, we know that there are these things called conditioned emotional responses, you know, like, for example, the fear conditioning with little Alpert. Right. So, quick summary, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a bunny, but it's just a cute picture. So anyway, so you've got uh, little Albert and the bunny. Um, you take the bunny, which doesn't originally elicit fear in little Albert, and you pair that with a loud noise. Right. So the hammer being banged in the presence of the baby, the hammer produces fear. You know, the baby starts crying. Right. So part of fear, that orienting response, or that startle response, the orienting response, and all those things, we end up describing that as fear. Right? But if you pair those two things, the, the bunny and that, that sound, right, it will eventually cause the bunny to produce fear. Right? Um, so there is your uh, classical conditioning of emotions. Right? And as we just talked about with the previous slide, you're more than likely to avoid bunnies in the future, which then negative, which is going to keep your fear reduced. So then you're negatively reinforced for avoiding the bunnies. Okay, so it's, it's an interesting cycle that happens. Um, but that emotional stuff, the, the physiological parts, are definitely classically conditioned. Right? Now, what's the operant component of the emotions? Well, let's look at it. How we react to those physiological changes, in other words, the emotions, so how you react to an emotion, that is operant conditioning. In other words, when some people get mad, right, some people yell, right? Um, they scream and they get loud, they get really pissed off, they bang stuff, right? So you go, oh, I'm so frustrated. You know, you hit the, hit the desk or you do something like that. That is the operant response to the, the physiological experience, right? So the physiological experience, which was classically conditioned. Right. Uh, some people get mad. Some, you know, some are sorry. Some people yell when they get upset. Some people uh, get quiet when they get upset. Those things are then reinforced and punished. Um, and people can change their reactions to emotions. Maybe when you're younger, you do one thing, and then as you grow up or as you um, as you change and as you experience different situations, you change how you react to particular stimuli. Right. So again, that's the result of punishment and reinforcement. If I react one way to the to getting angry and my wife doesn't like that, guess what? She's punishing my particular reaction. She's not punishing my emotion. She's punishing my reaction to that emotion. It's okay to have the emotion, but it's not okay to react in one particular way. So then that the way of reacting reduces. Okay? Um, so there you're punishing that one reaction. And of course, you can reinforce it just as well. Another operant component is being able to describe it. Some people just suck at being able to describe their emotions. That's all there is to it. You know, I think your book talks about uh, some research that says by the time you're nine or something like that, you can describe most of your emotions. Well, some people just aren't that can aren't that good, right? They haven't had that much practice. Uh, they haven't been reinforced for describing their emotions. Maybe they they say, oh, I don't know what I'm feeling. And some people get frustrated when they have a discussion with someone and, and someone and the person says, I have no idea what I'm feeling or I just don't know. I don't get it. Maybe they're telling you the truth. Maybe they do not know how to describe that physiological experience. In other words, their emotion. And if they haven't learned how to describe it, then guess what? You might have to teach them how to describe it. Um, and with kids, it's the same type of thing. You you have to you have to expose them. You, know, you have to expose them to the words that allow them to describe these things, and then reinforce appropriate description. You know, um, and it's very context specific, right? You know, you get a kid that you know one behavior can look. Uh, 
one overt behavior can look one way um, and be a reaction to one emotion and then it, you know let's say anger you could be yelling and uh, chasing or something like that then it, that's your reaction to anger um, but in another situation that's actually happiness so um, this gets to be really challenging for people to actually describe stuff but that is an operant sort of thing and so let's look at some of these causes about how emotion develops, right? Um, so reinforcers and punishers right, cause certain emotions, happiness, sadness, so on and so forth. Right? Um, in other words, they're simply unconditional stimuli or conditional stimuli. So a reinforcer can be an unconditional stimulus. Right? So think about that for a second. Behavior happens, it's reinforced. The reinforcer itself is also a U.S for say happiness or whatever it may be. Okay? So those things are directly tied to each other. So when you reinforce someone, you may produce happiness. When you punish someone, um, you may produce anger or frustration or something like that. So then again, the reactions to that happiness and that frustration can then be reinforced or punished. And you see how this cycle really starts to build, right? Um, so somebody that uh, does something, gets punished for it, then they get angry about it, and then they get punished for that, and then that produces anger, and then it just cycles up, and it just it starts to get out of hand, right? Um, and that's a, that's a normal sort of thing, but you have to intervene, and you have to try to change some of those stimuli that are happening if you want to change the behavior. Right? So sometimes when we talk about how we feel, we, say we often feel ways... Um, because of the operant conditionings, that the operant uh, contingencies that we're experiencing at the moment. So if you're generally happy with your life, you might be getting quite a few reinforcers. If you're generally frustrated with your life, you might be getting a few punishers or too many punishers. Uh, and this is how this starts to play a role with um, anxiety. This starts to play a role with uh, depression and all those types of things. So it's not as simple as what a lot of our textbooks just make it out to be. It, it's really this complex uh, dance between all of these different stimuli and the responses to those stimuli and what happens to those responses, right? Are those responses punished or extinguished and so on and so forth?